everybody, and welcome to the To the, the Wheels Fall Off podcast. podcast. And I am your host, Candace, also known as Spice from Spice Life TV. And this is my beautiful co host and husband. How y'all doing? It's Creed coming at y'all with the podcast that delivers re entry and, and relationships. That's right. In a beautiful, uplifting, learning type of fashion. So okay. we're here to give y'all what we got. That's what's up. So we are your hosts for today, and this is our, well, semi weekly podcast. <laughs> Halfway weekly podcast. We ain't there yet. We're not there yet. And the way we start off every show is we do a the segment that we started just started calling "What Up Though," and that's where we kind of give you an update on our week. So, would you like to go ahead and start, or would you like me to start? I'll let you start. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I've got a couple updates this week. Okay. So this week I took some notes actually because I wanted to make sure that I didn't forget this epiphany that I had this week a little bit. So you know we've been just. I've been actually just really trying to be more grateful and talk to God more and just have a more communication throughout the day with him. And the other day, it, it's it's come up a few times that he's talked to me this week. And one thing that he's uh, he shared to me, with me this week is that, um, and actually Kim put it, my cousin Kim, she put it in, she said that she'd read a post that said this, and it said that we are currently living in an answered prayer. And the reason this even came up for me is just because I was reflecting and like thinking about a lot of things, some things that I have, some things that I haven't gotten yet, and some things that I'm just like not sure if it's coming or not. And I was praying about it and kind of really kind of down about some things and crying about them. And then it was so clear that God was like, okay, yeah, you you do want that and no, you haven't got that. But do you remember when you asked me for this and this and this? Mm-hmm. And do you realize that that's this and this and this is what's happening right now? So mm-hmm. we're doing that so that we can get to the next things possibly. And I'm so busy worried about the fact that I didn't get what I want yet or all of what I want yet that I'm not even realizing and basking and enjoying and being grateful for what I'm getting mm-hmm. because it doesn't look like the finish line. And we are so caught up in getting to the goal that we forget the, all the prizes and the gifts along the way mm-hmm. that that's those are really what makes the goal worth it because how many times do you get to the goal and then still aren't happy it's i think a lot of times it's because you're not appreciating all of the wins all of the smaller goals all of the successes and the whole time you're working towards this goal god has already answered like 15 of your prayers that you're just like eh but i want this one oh but that was last week i want this one and you're on to the next and you're not even giving him the glory for what he's done for you Man, he's done a lot a but lot at the same time i think so the problem seemed to be the person the people who are not who are not so we categorize wins as the blessing mm-hmm. and we're not counting all the wins that we're getting exactly so the, it's, it's on the onus is on us to make sure we count every single win that we get and then give god the glory which mm-hmm. gives him incentive to give you more blessings because it's like you're appreciative appreciation you're is part what of the blessing. he's doing for you yeah Okay, so one of the other things that kind of came up for me this weekend, too, along with the same cousin, (laughs) along with the other cousins, we were all just talking this week, but um, just how we, you know, God has lent us his gifts and he like lets his gifts shine through us. So he basically gives us a a gift on borrow. Mm -hmm. And whether it be writing, whether it's, you know, you trying to, that you have a message to share, whether it's you play an instrument or you sing God has blessed you with that gift. And when we are nervous and shy and intimidated, those are all valid feelings and things that are normal and we should feel. But when we let those feelings um, take over and stop us from using God's gift that he gave us to share his love and his, all of the wonderful things he does, if we use, let those fears stop us from sharing his gift, we're missing the whole point. Like we're not, we're not understanding the assignment. And so, yes, I'm intimidated. Yes, I'm nervous. Yes, I'm sometimes fear of being judged. But I know that I have a message and I know that I have s- s- words that he needs me to say and things that he needs me to do. And when I'm trying to edit things so perfectly or cut out a bunch of stuff or not saying certain stories because I don't know how it's going to come off. The other day, he so clearly said like, yeah, this isn't for you, though. Stop putting yourself in that. You're stopping something that I need for someone else to get, Mm -hmm. and you're stopping it because you're making it about you. Mm -hmm. And the the message ain't even for you, Mm -hmm. but you're delivering the message. So just do that. It's so hard to do. Like, stay in your lane, play your position. That's all I'm asking you to do. All I'm asking you to do. And it's so hard to do when the talent 
is yours, mm -hmm. but really you're borrowing this talent. Yeah. And yeah, you feel personally attached to it and connected to it. You should have some pride with it. But for you to dictate when you use it and when you don't use it, when he's telling you to use it, that's where the problem is. And I have had to check myself because I've done that quite a few times recently. And I just don't want to cheat God because I know I'm cheating myself. I'm ultimately cheating myself. And it goes back to just being like, you cannot help God do his job. Nah, he's got it. <laughs> it's crazy how we are. We're very arrogant people. Um, I don't even know where I got it from, but yeah, we're arrogant. It's, what's funny is that, you know, if you're a churchgoer, you know, one of the very first verses you learned was, I can do all things through Christ, right? Mm -hmm. And you forget that all the time. Like, all things. And I remember back in the day, preacher saying, not some things. Like, he just reiterated <laughs> all things. You remember that, huh? He just caught you. <laughs> all things. And we get grown and we get life experience and we forget that stuff that we learned when we was really, really innocent. It was really, really basic. Mm -hmm. Then you go back to the basics. It's true. Like, I know he can do it. And I know I can do it because he's strengthening me. So Well, he's already done it. And now you got to just do your part. Live it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's dope. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. That's good. Anytime you give a message that God been talking to you, I like it when you share it with the world. Thank you. That's real deal. Thank you. Because that is actually being obedient. Number one, mm -hmm. and then number two, of course, it falls in line with what we do. Yeah. So that's dope. Keep talking to her, God. Okay. Yeah. I'll let you girl. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, though. Thanks. You feel good about that, though. I do. When you have conversation with him, how do you feel afterwards? Immediately. You know what's crazy is because well, I always feel good after, and normally, well, good in a in a level of sometimes crunchiness. Well, that's why I was asking. <laughs> I mean, I'm good because I get clarification, but you do feel crunchy a lot of times. Mm -hmm. But I, I was telling the girls, too, this week, like, there's been so many different ways that you get confirmation from him. Like, mm -hmm. that's what I wanted you to do. Yes, yeah. that's what you're supposed to do. And the confirmation comes in the most random, out-of-the-way places or people. And it's like, okay, when you have that, when you feel like you know that you're aligned... And you're com like the communication is clear, mm -hmm. and you're so sure about it. That's a really good feeling. Okay, I challenge you on this. Put your hand down. No, because even though you may know, mm -hmm. and you may know it and have conviction that God, that you and God have that oneness, right? Tell the people how important it is, though, to ask God if you want the confirmation, because I watched you ask for confirmation, and literally like an hour or two later, somebody sent you a message. You were saying, God, I want no confirmation that what I'm doing affects people, and then this this girl oh! sent you a message like an hour later. That was crazy. And so I think you should tell the people that even though you have this alignment with God, it's okay to ask him for that comfort, for any type of confirmation. Yeah. And please tell the people how it happened to you. So, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, a um, couple weeks ago, I just had, just like with, with work, with this podcast, with just some of the other ventures I'm working on, I'm always, I'm not, I'm always sure that I'm like, is this the, I know I'm supposed to be doing it, but am I supposed to be doing it like this? Mm -hmm. So that's always kind of where I'm like a little hesitant. And because sometimes you don't see fruits of your labor, it's like, am I doing this? Is this really what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I going the right way? Am I affecting people? Am I touching people's lives? Like, I read something and I posted it actually. So if you're not following me on my Instagram, you should because you guys are missing a lot of good nuggets over there. But let me read it because I've decided that I'm making this like my new mission statement. So I posted this on my um, Instagram and it says, I want to be remembered for my kindness, for showing up, for giving second chances, for acknowledging my own toxic traits, and for loving selflessly. If it ain't that, if that ain't it, then I failed horribly. Remember to extend grace because we're all just walking each other home. I want that to be my legacy. I want when I pass away, people to say, you know what? She was not perfect. She had an attitude. But what I will say is that she cared about me and let me know. She showed me she cared and made me feel that she cared. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't get it right all the time. So I was asking God for some confirmation. And just, uh, we had posted the video. And I was looking through comments and reading and I'm telling him some other stuff. And I'm going through the comments and just like that, a client of mine, who was a very special client of mine, 
and she had said in the comments on one of the, the YouTube videos that she had Googled my name looking for me and this popped up and that I had touched her and helped her in her life in different phases of her life. And actually we're meeting to go to lunch soon because of that reconnection. But when I tell you this young lady, she was one of my like stars. She was my one of my special clients. I'll never forget her. Think about her often. I'd looked her up often and read her story because she has a pretty incredible story that she's uh, of what she's endured and that was online and so I, I looked that up a few times hoping that I could find like an Instagram or a phone number because I texted her a few times and she didn't respond but to get that just from asking God for something and and it's so easy for him he just like here you go he did and, that and the amount of joy that I saw you get from that it wasn't even just a message I think I think it was the message and the fact that you you was excited about your connection with God in that moment. Mm -hmm. Like I just asked him and mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I think that was dope. Yeah, that was dope. So, I like stuff like that. That's so dope. I, listen, if stuff like that happens to us throughout our life, that's the only reward that I need. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like a connection with God and to be able to help people and to be able to know that you're helping people. That's all I need. Isn't that a and good, that's, that's, that's really it. Yeah. I mean, who, that is really what drives me. I, I love helping people. I, I enjoy connecting people to resources that fix or improve or change their life. That is really, like, I think that is what Candace does. Mm -hmm. That is really it. That's my everyday job. That's what I do in my family life, my friend life. Like, I am just, that's my, that's my lane. And it is. It is. Mm -hmm. Good thing you recognize it and stick to it, though. I enjoy it. You know, that's what's up. So what about you? What up, though? Mm, what up, though? Well, you have I'm a lot going of to, up. I do, but I'm going to, for the purposes of this okay. session, I'm going to let the world know that this week, your boy got paid some extra money. Oh, you did? Yeah. Did it get confirmed? It got confirmed. So it was it was a <laughs> nice plethora of money, so close to close to a thousand of it was overpaid. Oh, but overpaid. I still, yeah, but okay. still, it's still overpayment, and I got it confirmed. So it's like... So what happened, world, is I worked a I worked a number of jobs over the last few months and didn't get paid for it. I'm not knowing, so I'm not missing the money. So well, it he was got paid. Yeah, he didn't I got, get paid the additional wage. Yeah, he was earned. it was a prevailing wage job, so I was supposed to get a certain amount, and I didn't get it. I got my regular wage job, and so they added it all up for all the times I've been there, and it happened to be a place that I didn't want to go to every day. It that sure sucked did. every day. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they when they when they shot me the, the money, I woke up at two o'clock in the morning and seen it on my phone. I purposely didn't tell you because I didn't want you to be like, Boogie, is it? And I knew I had to go you know, to work. I had that money spent. Yeah, and I had to go to work and do a lot of stuff because a lot of changes happened at that time. So I had to do that and I didn't know when I was going to be able to do it. So I was like, I ain't going to tell Kenneth so I know something. And then I got confirmation today. So, world, you know how it is. When you get money, it all feels like it's extra. When you're not expecting it, whether it's yours or not, so That's that was good hella dope. Surprise. Yeah, it's Especially hella dope. when for the for you to be able to say an extra a, a thousand of it was overpaid. Yeah. Uh, and still have a chunk. Yeah. That's so nice. it was cool. It was cool. So I my week plans been good. for that. Yeah. Well, I got plans for it too, uh -huh. and they all involve you. So Yay! That's good. Even better. <laughs> okay, so our next segment is the question of the week. Oh boy. We each ask a question of the week. And uh, give her a little sh spiel. Spiel. Mm -hmm. We do. And the question of the week this week is coming from uh, Convo and Chill. From the Convo and Chill pile, I'm going to pull a card and ask you a question first. Do it. Make it a good one. <laughs> Name a song that would be on your sex playlist. Oh. I think I know this one, but I want to hear what your answer is. There's a few, but that one, uh, well, there's a couple. I know. That's why I said I want to know what your answer is. I well, know. it depends on what are we doing. What kind of, what kind of, what kind of night is it? What are we, is this like a. Fuck it. Okay. You don't say that. Like, <laughs> I should have clarified that. Why did I not? <laughs> <laughs> that's what. Was, what? <laughs> Shit. Why did I just walk right into that? That is a simple question and a simple <laughs> answer. I don't know how to make it more. World, y'all feel No, I meant like. They going to get it. So, <laughs> anyway, let me just answer the question. All right. <laughs> okay, so there's two that I really like. Um, 
there's one by I don't even see the thing is is I had to I had to recently cancel him because I just don't like a lot of the stuff he does. But the baby and Ashanti have this song called really? Baby, 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 Baby. Baby, baby. Mm-hmm. It's a redone of her old one. And just the way he talks on that song, I don't something about that song is always like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you wanna know why? Cause y'all ladies, especially black ladies, <laughs> love them with my talk shit. That's what it is. <laughs> he is that that's turned exactly that, what he is. He's talking I ain't even heard the song. Crap. He has to be talking shit to be on the love song with he Ashanti. Is. So I'm like, okay. I'm I think pretty. too, I heard started I heard it the first time when you were at work release and I was on at I was at the um your job bringing you lunch mm-hmm. and I was waiting for you to come out and that song came out and I might have been a little randy already. You but let it, me hear that song. I did because I yeah, was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when I came to the car for lunch. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and those times we were kind of going through it because yeah. we couldn't get a we, five, we couldn't get, get five minutes. We couldn't get five minutes, y'all. It was a hard or a warm dwelling. Six months. It was like if we got if we got five minutes. <laughs> it was cold. <laughs> <laughs> or you yeah. know it don't work. <laughs> <laughs> you know it ain't right there. So I'm just saying. Babe, don't be putting your business out there I'm like that. I'm just saying. I'm just being honest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not that it can't. I'm just saying it's more difficult. It's like, man. We got it, babe. We got it. Um, it was a hard... It was a hard... <laughs> like, we were literally in each other's face, space and company for 30 minutes at lunchtime and 20 minutes when I took him home every night. And that was it. And we were it. like... We didn't have no time, no space, no opportunity. It was very... It was very little. Anyway. Yeah. That's crazy. But that song was it, and then the one by Tank. When we... I knew it. That's the one I knew. You sent me that song, that's how I knew. You know what's crazy? It's gonna make sweet love. I'm just kind of doing a little mental calculation in my head. It's not hard, of course, so I ain't no math wizard. But that time that we used to spend together equals out to about 100 minutes a week with your wife, y'all. 100 minutes a week is what we were spending. If it's 50 minutes a day, five days a week... That's crazy. The crazy thing is that we thought that was horrible, and there's some people who would love that. 500. I said 100 minutes a week. 500. And I'm just like... Mm-hmm. And you with me. <laughs> but still, it, it what's funny is, with as much time as we spend now, and still feel like it's not enough. How did we get through that? And I'm out here. I'm not in the joint, so it's not like a visit. I'm out here, and we only getting a few minutes. How did we go through that? Now you know you know God was in the session. He definitely was. He was in the session then. We had some but we did fight a couple we had some doozy fights. Yeah. During that six months. Yeah. There but was a were, couple. Definitely do. Cause we were frustrated. Not to say that the fights were because of that, but I'm just saying no. like it was like already we were like mm. Yeah, fed up, yeah. tired. Yeah, it's crazy. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. What was B on your playlist? Sex song, so that's, that's crazy. It's actually going to be probably anything by... Uh, I can't even say it. Who? Who else? I mean, because he was growing up and in my adult life, he was always on the list, so I had to replace him. Yeah, but you know that that does not get nothing working here. No, that's that's why I said. Damn. We don't do that. You know what I'm saying? But that when we though, yeah, that's talking good. shit. I, I, good. I, I um, believe he said, like, don't push my stomach. And I think that that was it. A- <laughs> okay, enough. <laughs> don't do it. You don't do it. Because <laughs> I already know your black tails about nah, to be but, uh, uh, Okay, you answered your question. Moving on. Should people... Ask, ask the question. <laughs> okay. Should people be given jail sentences for animal cruelty? <laughs> okay, that's another one. You, no, you said it. I'm not asking that. That deal an- was asked and answered. I'm not asking it because you don't know how people might react out there. And we don't want to get people be tripping on us because I'm going to say no. And we, we got a dog lover out there and they don't want to watch our channel no more. So I ain't, I ain't asking that one. Okay. Would you live with your partner before or only after marriage? You've already done that. <coughs> You all right? Yeah. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Can you date potential? You did. You? I'm asking you. Okay, I can. I can. And honestly, to tell you the truth, before you, I think I always did. But. Oh. Uh. 
there's nothing wrong with that because you don't always meet people where they're going to be. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think that's actually a given. I think nine times out of ten when you're dating somebody, they're not always they're not all the way where they want to be. So you're always dating potential. That's true. For sure. I think that's absolutely a perfect way to say that. You're always dating potential. Yeah. Or m married to potential, yeah. whatever. Um, but I think that it's okay. I mean, and yeah, I did. I did date potential. Yeah. I stayed with potential because that's all you could give me at the time. Yeah. But I saw it. Mm, thank you. And I knew it was there. Actually, you. that's a great segue into today, though. Uh, if we want to talk about somebody's potential. You're crazy. <laughs> It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a actually a very, very That's decent a segue. good segue. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think dating someone at their potential is, or dating somebody with potential is a smart thing. Mm -hmm. But I also think that it's wise to be able to monitor how that potential is progressing. Yeah. Because if they're stagnant and you know it's there, like we know, there's a few people I've even told you that I know have high potential. They just ain't got to the point where they can get to that sore yet. Yeah, they can piss, press the gas. So. But I see that they're they're striving for it, so that's why I can be patient and have tolerance because I see them trying. Mm -hmm. If you see them have it and they just keep sitting on it, that's where I'm like, yeah, you got to go. Yeah. Potential don't pay the bills. Potential don't. And I'm gonna tell you right now, like that's why one of those one of my favorite movies is Good Will Hunting <clears> because <throat> it's all about wasted potential, mm -hmm. and it's it's a shame when you see it. And you're watching somebody just throw it away because they don't have the ambition to go with the potential, or mm -hmm. they don't have the 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 to be dependable, mm -hmm. uh, the ability to be dependable. Um, so, anytime I'm dating somebody and they they can just have two things: be dependable, be honest. If I can trust you and I can depend on you, we can start. Mm -hmm. We can get it cracking. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And everything else will fall into place. So to answer your question, and she gotta have a big booty. Oh yeah, I mean that's a given. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, tell the world how you've been popping that joint lately, too. Y'all, listen. I don't know what happened, but your girl learned how to twerk. And I can't stop. I've just been twerking on walls. I've been twerking been, on Been knew chairs. how to twerk. Didn't know she knew how to twerk. Well, that might be it. I yeah. didn't know I knew how to twerk. Because I can't see what's going on back there. All I see was going on in the front. And it don't look like it's going on back there like it's supposed to. You can hear it, though, because it be popping. Pop it, pop it, okay. pop it, pop it, pop it. The other pop day, it. something clapped. I don't even know what clapped. Remember what I was like? Don't tell the world that. Don't tell the world that. Don't tell the world that. Remember I got in the bed, I was like, what clapped? <laughs> that was all you, baby. And it was the right thing. You did. I hope so. It was the right thing. <laughs> Anywho. So, babe. Let's tell the people what we're going to talk about today. All right. I'm going to tell the people what we're going to talk about that today. How about that? Tell the people. Y'all. What are we going to talk about? Today, we are talking about something, somebody who is actually tremendous, stupendous, and has exceeded my expectations and has excelled to his potential and is still excelling to it. Y'all, no. we are talking about no other than my husband. You crazy. Creed Gray and his promotion, y'all. <laughs> Baby got a promotion! Clap it up, y'all. Yeah. Yeah, it was dope. It's dope. Tell the people what the promotion was, is, and then we're going to tell the people kind of this come about story. All right. So, at my job, <laughs> I've been promoted to a project manager. I work in construction. Specifically, as it, it, it is so it proud. Thank so you. proud, uh, mm -hmm. uh, so good. Specifically, as it pertains to uh, uh, interiors, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to framing, interior uh, design, doors, walls, stuff like that. Yep, this is what we do. And so, I've been working in this field for a couple years since I've been home. And you've been working with the company. I've been working with the company. Yeah, not even for a couple years, a year and a half actually. Mm -hmm. um, so he. Started with this company when he got out and went to work release in August of 2021. 2020. 2020. Sorry, 2020. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, I, I'm going to tell you all how it all came about. But long story short, I was promoted to a project manager. It is something that I knew that I could do when I was in a joint. The road to this, to this destination, I did not see it going this way. Mm -hmm. But the destination is the same no, no matter what. Um... So I'm positioned now to 
you know, it's like kind of call your own shots in terms of how you want to exceed. Mm -hmm. Now, they're still, it's still depending on other people as far as teaching and, you know, I still have bosses and whatnot, but I'm also somebody's boss. You are. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's it's been dope and I can't express it in words. I've been trying like for a week and a half now. I can't express it in words, but it's a dope feeling world. So to give y'all a little. Real quick though. Okay. I think that what this story is going to kind of, it kind of touches on what I said was my what up though this week about just understanding, seeing, appreciating God answering your prayers along the way. Mm -hmm. And also when you have a plan, you work hard and stick through the plan mm -hmm. and execute the plan, the blessings come. Oh, you all big on that. So you do the work, the blessings come with it. Mm -hmm. I, I just keep that in mind while he's telling you the story because it's, I think that's the main point. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, to give you all a little backstory, while I was incarcerated and I had maybe about close to three years left, mm -hmm. I was working at a place in a warehouse that uh, they bust us from the joint to the warehouse. It's about a 20 minute drive. And we was working in a warehouse, and where I learned to um, basically do all mechanical stuff, right? Um, driving all types of forklifts and learning how to be my own boss and learning how to uh, uh, pick and pull uh, things for other companies. Those are the things I didn't know. I knew I'd do it for individuals, like mm -hmm. customers, but doing this for whole companies and doing it by myself while I was in a warehouse, it just, it brought about something different. I already had a work ethic and I was dependable and I knew how to learn, but this brought back something that <coughs> said, if I'm gonna work for somebody, I need to move up to be at the top. Mm -hmm. So while I was working at this place, uh, this company came in and they did mock interviews. A bunch of construction companies, um, a whole lot of private owned companies, a few big ones, Amazon came in and they did mock interviews for a few inmates who were working at this warehouse. All right, I sat down with the company and the lady who interviewed me, uh, she was impressed with me, but I was also impressed with her. As far as the company she presented, it was like, man, this is some, some place I'd like to work. Mm -hmm. Long story short, she told me to contact her when I got out and so, um, that was March of 2019, oh, July. Wow. Yeah, that was yeah. March 2019. So I had to wait a whole year and some change until <laughs> July 2020, where I went to work release. Mm -hmm. I go to work release. Now I hit work release, and the very first thing they do is like, you got to get a job. So I'm trying to find a job. I go to this place that I had the mock interview with. Go to HR. The lady was not there, but I filled out an application, turned it in, and left. Mm -hmm. I called the next day, and the, the same lady who interviewed me, she said she remembered me. She was like, Mind you, just so real quick, y'all, I might try to put the clip in here. An incarcerated here. participant of the mock interviews is very thankful to those who take the time to put on events like this. The life skills he has learned that he can put to good use when he returns to the community mean the world to him. It's an invaluable tool and lesson for me, but also the encouragement also helps a lot because we're sitting here not knowing if what we've learned is going to work. Bell feels more ready than ever to get back into the real world, he says. I mean, it feels great. It, there's no anxiety. There's the, the I can't wait type of anxiousness that comes with it. I'm really excited, honestly, to just be normal again. Because Babe did the interview and they posted it on the CI website. Mm -hmm. I got to see him. Mind you, I got to see you in the first for the first time in a long time dressed like that yeah. with the tie and everything. Yeah. They didn't have a shirt to fit his size. I was wearing a state shirt, but I had a tie. You did have a tie. <laughs> he was so handsome and so articulate, and he was talking and doing his little spiel on the um, <laughs> thing. And she was really impressed with him yeah. at the time of the interview and was yeah. very much like, you come see me when you're she done. She did. And so when I came to see her, she <laughs> held true to her word. And uh, what I really wanted to do was an install position. Um, just be able to, you know, be on my own, go to construction sites, learn a lot on the job. But I couldn't because I was in work release. I couldn't travel, so I had to get a job in a the warehouse. They they employed me in the warehouse, mm -hmm. and it was like a physically, what's up? When you first went to the job to try to apply, mm -hmm. it took a little bit of time for you to get started. Oh, let me back up mm -hmm. and show you, world. Just show you how bad I am. To tell a story. So. Um, <clears throat> I applied for the job and when she told me to come back a couple days later and she remembered me, um, she wanted me to do the drug test and everything, the drug screening. So I did the drug screening and then she said she would let me know. Mm -hmm. While they were doing the drug screening and the background check, I literally was like, what's going on? Because it took a while 
for them to do this. For him, it took a while. It did. And mind you, we're in COVID, so he's not been out during COVID. COVID shut everything down. But then even for normal, I think because you're used to, like, I turned it in and then there, this yeah, is the process. And out here, that, you know, mm-hmm. people And there's, there's a part of me that it was, it was for selfish reasons because, number one, you wanted to be, like, the first one that came in that day to get a job. You want to, you mm-hmm. know, but at the same time, my main focus was... When I was in the joint, I was all about that, getting out and getting a job, mm-hmm. you know? And I wanted to s- stick to that because I felt like I had eyes on me, including yours. Mm-hmm. Because you knew I was, like, the job guy in the joint. And it was like, how you going to get out here and not be able to find a job? And you want your lady to be like, uh, what's going on? <laughs> so that's the first thing. And then the second thing, it was uh, part of my plan was while I was on work release to save money. So I wanted to get a job and start getting paid as soon as possible. And that was kind of stressing me out mm-hmm. at that time because I was like, I had nothing. So I'm just trying to start from scratch. Mind the, you, I wasn't thinking any of those things. No, you wasn't thinking any of those things. But, you know, a, a man. And so a man's going to think those things. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, long story short. It took a little while for him to get hired. It took about three weeks for them to finally say, come in. Yeah. And when I came in, it still wasn't to get hired. It was for an interview. And the interview was with the vice president of the company. And he was very gruff. He even asked me why I was why I was locked up. You ain't supposed to do that. Mm-hmm. But I wanted him to ask me that, whether it was legal or not. Like I wanted to be faced with those questions in my first interview being out. So I didn't mm-hmm. mind it. I wanted that attitude. Yeah. I wanted those things that I used to tell people in the joint they were going to face. Yeah. So I didn't mind it. Mm-hmm. My, my non-reaction to his gruffness was the thing that impressed him. And he immediately went and called the guy that actually hired me. Because as I was leaving for that interview about to go catch the bus back to work release, the guy that actually hired me ran out and was like, hey, mm-hmm. come back. Just got a call from from the vice president and was like, you fit the bill. So mm-hmm. he gave me a tour and I started in the warehouse a week later. A right? week later. And so this ended up being like the end, this the end of July. And that, was, and that wasn't the job he wanted. It, it wasn't the job I wanted, but I wanted to get a job when I got out of work release. It was <laughs> right. very important. So... I ended up working in the warehouse, and that was one of the most physically demanding jobs I ever had. And I've never been afraid of labor. Mm -hmm. It was it was different. I think because I'm out here, I'm in life. I'm literally tired before I get to work because the world is the world is just like it's like crazy. It's craziness going on, and I'm trying to slow it down in my brain, and then get to work and work eight hours, Mm -hmm. sometimes ten, and so. Those things were plus were, he's catching a bus, having to walk along. Yeah, ways I had to leave for work two hours. They wouldn't early. let me pick him up or anything. Yeah, so those things was going on, and I'm now I'm working in a warehouse, and I'm trying, I'm saving money, I'm going to work every single day, and I'm like, I'm doing what I said I wanted to do. This isn't the end. This isn't what I, what I'm going to continue to do. But for now, this works. Mm-hmm. I worked that warehouse job for almost a year, and when I tell you despised probably a good 75% of the time. Yeah. And it wasn't because he didn't like the job. It was just a hard job. The it, the warehouse is not run very efficiently. Mm-hmm. The turnovers all the time. People don't care. He really, like, when I tell you best work ethic I've ever seen in my life. Someone who... Well, thank you. Yeah, babe, you're good. I always be hoping that that rubs off on me. <laughs> because I'm thank like... You. Do I have to do that? Like, I'll find a way to cut a corner, and Babe will stick it out and do it. Like, he shows up every day. He stays to the end. He's a hard worker. Like, that is important to him. So when he's not seeing that, that adds to the frustration. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. he likes to work. He likes to get it done. So I know I left it like this for you. Why am I walking in? Yeah. And you ain't leaving it like that for me. So there was all these little points of contention that he had at this job. And through the whole time, he'd remember, like, you know, it's temporary. It's temporary. I'd be reminding him it's temporary. And he's also putting in trying to get into this this uh, install with our boy Ian. Yeah. And it was like, and I remember a few times we had a conversation when I came home late at night from the warehouse and I said, babe, I know I'm just paying my dues. And, or well, I'm at the bottom of the tow boy. This is what you got to do. And so the complaint was never to work, you know? It was mm-hmm. like, I just want to, I feel like I should be in an environment where it's, it's, you feel like coming to work every day. I think that's not too much for asking anybody. And when, I'm, when I say this next thing, I don't mean beneath you because you're better. Mm-hmm. You're just bigger than the warehouse Mm -hmm. like what you can do is bigger than a warehouse and so for someone who's not challenged 
even though the job was challenging physically, but you're not, it's not teaching you anything. You're not growing. It's not fueling you. It's not feeding you into that job that you're wanting necessarily. So it was really kind of a, yeah. a stinger for you. It was. And, and to be in that position for that long and not be able to do anything, it was fine. The second I was able to do something different, like I lost all want or need to go to that job. I was like, get me out of here. I instantly started contacting the president of the company and was like, I'm ready mm-hmm. to go to the position I originally applied for. I'm, mm-hmm. I got to get out of here. Mm-hmm. And he totally understood. So he did. It, it took about two or three weeks for the transfer to happen, but I ended up leaving the warehouse and going to install for the same company. So now I'm installing, right? And <coughs> I'm at I'm installing at warehouse pay. If anybody working in a warehouse, they know is a cap. So I start installing on an in house pet. Which he was already making the high end at yeah. the warehouse. So he was at the cap yeah. for the warehouse and he started at the new job at that cap. At that cap. And so when I'm talking about commutes, <laughs> hour and a half every day. So I'm paying for my gas at this warehouse pay. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And everything else that goes into this job where I go to Home Depot and go to buy stuff. But still making decent money. But still making decent money. But the point I was making as far as like doing this is like. I'm not asking. I'm doing this because I feel like it's going to be a return on it. And mm-hmm. it's not going to be necessarily monetary. It's going to be in in favor and reward. So mm-hmm. I just do it. I do it. And for a few months, I did it until they came to me. Before. No, no, no. But what was your goal? You said. So my goal was when I started was I'm going to work this for three months and then I'm going to ask for a raise. I'm yes. going to bust my ass for three months and show them what I'm made of and I'm going to ask for a raise. Two months, three weeks, and one day came before I could ask for a raise. My boss showed up on site while I was working and just said, I'm giving you a raise and I'm paying for half your gas. $4 raise and they're paying for half his gas. Mind you, the gas is really the, the raise yeah, that's because the raise. he's driving so much. And the, and the reimbursement is tax free. And it's, yep. You and so I don't even know, like, I honestly don't know <laughs> if they knew what they were <laughs> So they knew. And I, and I said that at first too, right? And then I was like, no, they knew because... Because as with relationships, companies operate on potential too. Mm-hmm. So, and I feel like that's what they was okay, doing. Say that. So they they give me the raise, they give me, they pay for half my gas. And so, boom, I'm like, okay, I'm going to work this for another three months because the guy that gave me the raise said, come see me in three months. Mm-hmm. They don't give raises but once a year. So he says, come see me in three months. Two months, two weeks go by before I could ask for that raise. The owner of the company calls me and he says, hey, you just been doing a great job. And there are certain things that you do on a job as far as details, there's reports, there's things that allow, that I allow somebody in the office or somebody sitting at home in the bed to drink coffee and read from a laptop and know exactly what's going on because mm-hmm. I was there. And they, they valued that, mm-hmm. right? And so that was like the first time when they really started paying attention at this pay rate. But also, he's not, he's kind of selling himself a little short. So, one thing that he instituted while he was doing that is like he every night, I don't know if this was required before, but he would start submitting his report. And because his reports were so detailed Mm -hmm. and such good information, it started to become like a who is this guy yeah. that's sending these reports from install? I mean, install is con- con- uh, construction guys. They got hard hats and, and hammers. They ain't trying to write. They ain't trying to take notes. They ain't really, you know, if it, besides a the measurement, they ain't writing it down. Mm-hmm. But because Babe took the time on his own and was so detailed on this is what you have, basically inventory of the day, what's left, and what he's going to come and finish doing, mm-hmm. it was like it just floored them and it spoke volumes and it just opened a bunch of different pathways for him and also began a new procedure. Mm-hmm. Like his report is now the one report that yeah. they're using with That's all the, the guys. Yeah, it's the template now. Thank you, babe. Mm-hmm. Because you said that better than me. That's why we together. Cause we got each other back. So, um, all that she said, true story facts. Okay. So those things happen and, they're like, they really were on the reports. And I honestly believe that that was what got me a lot of recognition because reports to a 
office guy, a computer guy. You know, like I said mm-hmm. before, they can read them and know what's going on. It was very, very important. So You're, you were able to fill in the gap between the office guy who's never done the construction work mm-hmm. by being the construction guy with the details and be able to translate it in office terms. Right. That is very valuable. Well, thank you. And then doing that also, there was another thing that's like um, when I'm on it, we're working by ourselves, which is right up my alley, but I'm on a site and I don't have to be on. When I say on, I don't have to deal with people, be people facing the people I am. He probably just woke up and brushed his teeth anyway, so ain't nobody worried about that. Yeah. But I'm bringing that up to say is I had to be on at certain times because I would never go to a site and not talk to the person who was in charge, mm-hmm. which was another thing that ended up working in my favor because having that interaction ended up building my brand on install in terms of, and, and I didn't even notice until a few days ago that it built my brand to the point where, like, I was on You're boards. You're saying he built his brand. Built my brand. Because <laughs> I was on boards <laughs> within the company to when emergencies happened, they would only send them if I was at the site. Mm-hmm. And, it, and I didn't even know that was going on. So these things behind the scene are going on. It, it causes a company to change the way they do business. You're They're coming for you. You're they're they going to, They feel like you're entitled to something. Came and so... What ended up happening was I worked install from July 7th last year mm-hmm. all the way until they came to me May 2nd. Mm-hmm. May 2nd and made it official. But, okay, but let's tell them that, though. Are that wasn't skipping? even... Yeah, you skipped oh, the a Elliot lot. conversation? Okay. The what? The Elliot conversation? The first Elliot... That conversation? How you found out? Like, there's so much. Okay. He don't really... Well, this is the thing. He don't like to talk about himself. He likes to be talked about. So if I was telling the story, he'd be all about it. But him having to tell the story makes him awkward. Yeah, I don't like it. But he's telling this story. I don't like it at all. It's that good. So <laughs> I'm working. Everything's going well. Yep. Uh, owner of the company, of the construction company, comes up to a job I was working. And he was like, hey, I didn't mean to talk to you, man. You know, when you first got hired, you were very direct in, in, in saying that you wanted a pathway to success at this company. And I just kind of want to talk to you about talk to you and see if that pathway's changed, and then how can we make sure that you're on that pathway? And I, for him to come to me and say that, and me not to go to the owner and say that, I was real big because I know how busy he is, how much how much he got to deal with, right. and for him to remember that it was big for me. Mm-hmm. And so I was I was real appreciative. I was like, okay, thank you. I, we'll set up a time, and I'll definitely give you a call and kind of lay that out for you. Well, it didn't even come to that, so. After he did that, for the next three weeks, he just had me kind of just shifting from one job, from install and doing some PM stuff and all that. It's just kind of playing both sides, but he made it seem like he just needed help. Yeah, and I he, was capable, and so he was like, "Hey, try this out and see." Kind of like a job shadow. Like if you like it, maybe we can talk about more. Yeah. But he's telling me this whole thing, and I'm like, "So is this a promotion?" He's like, "No, no, not it's a just promotion. me kind of seeing if this is something I want to do." So that's how I'm walking with it. Yeah. Until the days keep going, and he's telling me more and more about these tasks he's doing and all the stuff he's doing and where he's going, and I'm like, "So, babe, is this like, are you getting promoted?" <laughs> And he's still like, no, I mean, they're just seeing how it goes. Yeah, and I was like, I'm supposed to have a conversation with the president, but I don't, they haven't told me anything official. And I said, I'm still installing, still doing my job every day. And uh, we were working out as a Friday. I mean, literally, it was just like regular work, just turned into regular work for three weeks. And so I come home on Friday, me and Babe working out. We down at the, we, we got a look. Nice little spot in the backyard where it's, it's on. It gets on. We in there sweating, and my phone rings. And so I got the phone, you know, hooked up to the Bluetooth speaker. And so when I answer it, she hears it. And it was, uh, it was a girl from HR who was actually in the office the day I came to file the application. She was calling to congratulate me. That's his buddy. Yeah, her, yeah, she, she, she's all that. She's really helped me out a lot. So Kayla from HR calls me, and she's like, hey, congratulations. I want to congratulate you on your promotion. And I'm just like... Excuse me? And I look up, and Spice is standing there. She just got through doing her set. She's sweating. And she's like, and I was like, well, what do you mean? She said, your promotion to project manager. Your paperwork just came through. Like, you don't know what, what I mean. That's what she said. Like, you don't know what I mean. I didn't know what she was talking about. But I didn't want to dime her out, right? Because she might not. She might have been delivering information she didn't know she wasn't supposed to be given. So I was just kind of playing it cool and letting her tell <laughs> me not, more information. Like... Yeah, but she don't know. So she don't know. She don't know that she's telling me stuff that I don't know. So yeah. she didn't really tell me anything. 
I basically ended up getting agreeing with with her to go fill out some paperwork on the Monday. So I got the phone all with her weekend. all weekend. I don't know if I got a promotion, if I got more money coming, what's going on, if this is true, because nobody's told me anything directly. Can't Spice wanted to tell everybody I all did. weekend. I was like, nah, because we don't know. Tyler don't. and Taylor, I wanted to tell you two first, just so you know, Very on true. the record. Very true. I told her no in case it wasn't, in case they snatched it from me on Monday. <laughs> Monday morning, I I was supposed to go in the office and meet a guy, and I'm thinking I'm just going to go meet him about some stuff that I did for him. He's a project manager, and he's now my boss. But I go meet him to talk to him, and he sits me in the conference room and says, hey, Everything that you've been doing out in the field is amazing. He said, but there's particularly your ability to pay attention to detail, your willingness to work, and your integrity. We want to offer you the job of project manager. Instant. So now I'm sitting there, and he's like, I'm, I'm saying, are you serious? I'm leaning across the table. I'm like, are you serious? And he's like, yes, absolutely. I said, I, I can start now. He said, we want you to start now. I want you to start today. He said, it's a job that we interview no less than two two times for. You have to go through two interviews to get this job. He said, we're not interviewing you. He said, if you want it, you got the job. I said, I want it. So your boy is sitting up here right now talking to y'all world. And he's a project manager. What's that? What's that? What you doing? I'm a project manager. Project manager. So I got jobs. I got to handle all this money. I got to delegate. But the grind ain't over. Understand that, y'all. The grind ain't over. It's it's not just starting, but it's a grind on another level. Mm -hmm. Because, like I said, I'm more in control of what happens now in terms of who I network with, who I build my brand with, our brand, um, who I decide to let into my circle because my circle is big mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying in terms of what's going to happen in the future my circle is real big and i want I these bet. type of people to be in my circle you know, know what i'm saying that's right but it's been so dope now i'm learning on the fly here so it's like some days it's like mm, i don't know this yet but i'm trying to pick it up you're but doing it's been, a really good job thank you it's been the dopest experience but i'm gonna tell you all this i'm gonna tell you all this <laughs> I personally decided to come to y'all to with the Wheels Call Off podcast today with no hat on. You see that, right? Your boy ain't got no hat on because he's wearing a different hat. All right? He's wearing a different hat nowadays. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, he's a project manager. He's doing his thing. Okay. Yeah. I cannot. In all seriousness, world. <laughs> in all seriousness, world. I'm going to tell y'all this. I may sound arrogant, but I'm I'm he extremely is. humbled he is. by everything that's happened up to this point and the way it happened. You know what I'm saying? Because it was a lot of humbling moments in terms of being home, thinking you knew this, the world <coughs> operates like that. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, man, every time I felt like I had it right, I had it wrong, right? And so when stuff like this happened, it's like you did something right. Even though you was kind of tripping and falling, trying to get your footing as you got out, there's some part of this whole release that you did right. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell y'all this story about my promotion to big big up me. I did it because I need y'all to understand that when I was in the joint, I had a plan. This is all about the importance of a plan. I not only had a plan, I had a plan A and purposely didn't make a plan B. And when you're in the joint, people always tell you make a plan A, then make a plan B, or you're gonna always go back to what you used to do. Mm -hmm. But how important it was for me to stick to this and put my all into it and grind hard because sometimes when you know you got to fall back you'd be like okay i don't need to get up today because if this doesn't go well my fall back is mm -hmm. ready to go right 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 and i'm telling you to get up in the morning to put 10 toes on the ground when that clock went off and it's still dark outside some days that was the first victory of the day for me and but what happens is when I get that first victory, getting that head off the pillow, and I ain't never had a hard time getting up. I'm talking about getting out the bed with this one. That's what's hard. So I mean, true story. When I get up in the morning, put ten toes on the ground, I get that first victory. I'm instantly looking for another one, and I really think that's what catapulted me because I'm at work looking for victories. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at another win because I was like, I got up this morning, and I didn't do all that to come here and slack. You see what I'm saying? So those that mentality really catapulted me, and it still is. It seems like. You know, I think it's, I think that's wonderful that you knew that you needed that, that you knew I can't give myself a backup plan because I need to do this and that. 
I think that it's important to though make sure we say that it, you need to know that you can do that. Yeah. Because if you're not that person, you need a backup plan, a C, a D. Like, I know that I am not that person. And, and it's okay to not be that person. I just want to put that out there. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you can have a plan and a backup plan, and you know you need that. If Absolutely. you are someone who can do what he did, Absolutely. then do that too. Then do that too. Yeah. I'm, I'm just basically saying that's not, I'm not saying that's the way for everybody. I'm saying yeah. that there's another option in planning. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't always have to be plan A, plan B, plan C. So, yeah, Spice is right. If you can do it, absolutely do it this way. But if you can't, stick to plan A, plan B, plan C. Um, for me, let me tell you this. It was always, every single thing I've ever done in life, whether it was good or bad, whenever I planned it out and followed through, I needed it to be go for broke. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how I operate. Mm -hmm. So, if it's go for broke, I know how I'm going to approach it. Right. I'm not saying that if it's not going for broke, I'm going to do anything different. I'm just saying this is the best way. Okay. And so, what I always want to do during the grind is to stay refreshed for the grind. Like, you know, I come home sometimes, I was dead tired. You know what I'm saying? But it was like, this grind is going to support so much more mm -hmm. down the road that I need to stay energized for this grind. So, every single day, get up. Do what you have to do and get it done. Get it I've done. done that so far and it's worked. It's paid dividends and I appreciate it. I thank God for it. I thank I Spice too. for it because those are the two people that made this happen. Outside I mean, of myself. Outside of yourself. Outside of myself. Those are the only two people. Because honestly, and I don't even want to, I don't even think you can give me that credit. I think God just, I think I got to thank God too for him me being able to be like open for him to put me in the positions because the same kind of stories that I've told you about just like how we came about the house and the jobs and all that stuff mm -hmm. it's kind of feeds into the thing uh, to your story of like I didn't there was nothing that I did that could have made this happen he I asked for it I prayed for it and I tried to do the work to get myself set up so that he could bless me mm -hmm. and I think you did the same thing like you asked for it you did the work and you worked while you waited mm -hmm. that's the other thing I think people forget you ask and pray and then you just sit on your hands yeah. and that is not okay you got to still be putting in the effort like mm -hmm. you got to get up every day make those phone calls get up research the resource find the resources find all the details and make sure you're ready so that when he does give it to you, you can hit the ground running mm -hmm. and the um praying praying for what you're what you want kind of is leading me to what i forgot to say as my other epiphany this week mm -hmm. um my my uh affirmation for the week that i got from a gal off of tiktok and if i can remember her name i'll put it there but she said i am in my perfect timeline and that hit so strong for me because there's a couple ways you can look at it. You're in your perfect timeline because, of course, what God wants for you, he's got that worked out for you. So it's happening right now. Your timeline is happening according to what God's will is. But there's also a perfect, like, you can ask for what you have as your perfect timeline. I know that I want A, B, and C, and D. And I've asked God for that. And within his will, I know that I'm in, right now, in my perfect timeline. It might not look exactly like I want it to look, but it is perfect for me in the space that I am in mm -hmm. and that you're in. And we're just excelling in that. Yeah. I mean, it literally feels like like we ain't caught in the current. Yes. Oh, and that's so, a good way to say yeah, that. Yeah, so you know how you're in the current. You see fishes in the current. They don't have to swim as hard. They kind of go with it. And mm -hmm. it's like, we're still doing the work, mm -hmm. but there's definitely something stronger taking us in this direction. Yeah. And I, I, I dig it. Because you're absolutely right about that current thing because it's not like we're not working and it's not like we're working hard, but the 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 pool, it's yeah. just like leading us to yeah, it. Yeah, because we was working hard a few weeks ago. <laughs> And it's like, and it's like God has said, I'm I'm a, not only gonna take the training wheels off, but I'm gonna keep my hand on the back of y'all seat. Yeah, and I'm gonna guide y'all all the way through. And he's been doing it. Yes. So it's been dope. dope. But let me tell you this though, back to what your point where you saying you can't take credit for that. Here's what you don't understand. I want the world to understand. In any successful relationship or marriage, I don't care who you are, your success is attributed to the other person when the other person 
is doing what they're supposed to do. Because a lot of people don't understand mm -hmm. that no matter what you did, how your grind was to get to the position you was, that somebody who's doing what they're supposed to took things off your plate that you didn't have to worry about while you was doing that grind. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, in essence, you may have still gotten here if you didn't have this person. You may have, but you might not have. Mm -hmm. Or it might have been a lot different, mm -hmm. and it might have changed you. What you allowed me to do was to come home, and even though the world was beating me up, it's and I say beating me up as far as like me trying to get acclimated to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. Even though that was going on and I come home, you provided an environment to where I didn't have to worry about a lot of stuff until later. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I didn't have to worry about a lot of stuff till later. That allowed me to focus on this job, be successful, put a lot of, more into it than a lot of people probably could have. Yeah. That's why I said you definitely played a part of my success, and I thank you. Well, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. And I thank God. And I thank y'all to not. I got you. Yeah, I will thank y'all <laughs> not to talk about the lipstick that's probably on my mouth, but I, but it's been dope, y'all. So, uh, you know, I just want to say thank you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? To God, to you, to everybody who supported me, because a lot of people be trying to come out here and prove people wrong. I had the mentality that I'm going to prove people right that have faith in me, mm -hmm. and I think that setting yourself off on that type of tangent as far mm -hmm. as like who you're trying to prove stuff to also contributes to success you know mm -hmm. i don't i'm not here. i don't care about people that, that that didn't have faith in me i care about the people that did well you know i was always your number one fan still am mm -hmm. but babe more than anything i am just so proud of you like you. so proud of you and it's not even like i'm shocked it's not like my pride is from some surprise. Like, right. I knew I would be proud of you. I'm just in the point of being more proud of you because none of this is surprising to me. Honestly, I wasn't shocked when they told us that. I, I can say that it did happen faster, but n not really a surprise because you are just that guy that does that. That would, that would happen. Like, I expect those kind of things for you because you just are that person. But... I'm just so proud that, like, when I talk about my husband and my husband that is just coming home after being wrongfully incarcerated for 26 years, and in less than two years, he's made promotions and leaps and bounds and done things for me and our family that, like, for one, I've never had, but then that most people never get to, mm -hmm. which you've done in two years and if we want to talk about paycheck, it took me my whole life. <laughs> and here you come, jumping Stop. out the pen. Stop. I mean, can we be a little salty? I, Stop. If I wasn't benefiting from it, I would be salty. Because it took me my whole life to get this paycheck. And here he come. Stop. You would cut that out. Anywho. But I'm saying, hey, though, for real. Like, you. that doesn't, that is not something to sleep on. That's not something to take lightly. And while we definitely give God all the credit, babe, like you are so worth that that glory too. I am going if I if I wasn't, I will make sure that I am. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. Um because y'all 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 can listen to all my words that I've said on any podcast up to this point, but take this one. I got a lot to prove still. Mm -hmm. And I don't wanna ever lose that edge that I got a lot to prove, you know? Yeah. I don't care where I get to. Because, um, truth be told, um, there's a lot of people watching. And I'm talking about people that I love and, and, and can only get inspiration from seeing somebody else do it. Mm -hmm. There's some people that you can't tell them about inspiration. They have to sh you have to show them. Yeah. And their life is way too important for me to let them down. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, this is, this is for all the stakes and all the marbles. You know what I'm saying? And um, at the end of the day, no matter how, what happens with this job, I'm going to learn something. You are. I'm going to come out better for it. So I'm just looking forward to the ride. And I'm just so glad that I'm like on your team and I'm here with you because I, like for one, I've said this many times about just me, but the two of us are really cool people. I think just separate, like decent people, nice people, fun people, cool people, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm glad that we get to experience the different levels of cool I, like, I'm about to experience where you about to be cool next at. Yeah, like, yeah, you're yeah. cool here now, but I yeah. know you're about to be doper, like, next time this year. I can't wait to see what it is. I'm like, what, to be. what you about to do? You're going to end up being, you're going to end up sending me a picture or something and be like, this is a year ago today. 
And we're going to both be like, damn. Yep. Because we do that now. We do do that now. It's crazy. That is crazy. I don't know what next year this time will look like, but I just love living life with you. You are like, I like lifing with you. She says that a lot, y'all. I do. And I've never heard it put like that. So every time you say it, I always look at you like. Lifing? Yeah. And I'd be like, <laughs> okay. He is but the I, best But I get wife. it and I appreciate it, babe. Yes. I really do. We're fun. We're, we have a good time. That's my dog. Oh, my God, man. <laughs> That's my naga, my girl, ma. <laughs> you know you my naga, ma. I can't. What not. is wrong with Will you? Say that, You're man. crazy. You, you know that, man. World, me. like literally, I literally was just telling her I love you. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you my... know that makes me laugh every time. You're crying. <sighs> Cut, <laughs> guys. That is going to end our episode. Is Another it? episode. Yes. We're going to wrap this thing, this puppy up. We just wanted to share. I wanted Babe to share and have a little bit of time to talk about himself and all the wonderful things he's done with this job and this promotion and just kind of, just to show people like, you really can make this work out here. Yeah, you like can. you can really make it work out here. It's hard. It's not easy. We know that from just us that don't have a background. Mm -hmm. But I just love that you're able to show and be a testimony that there are options and opportunities for people who have backgrounds. And if you put in the effort and energy and the hard work and you keep God first, you're you're set. Hundred percent. Like, and then find you a good, find you a good woman. That won't hurt either. But you got to be good hurt. to her. It don't hurt. But you got to come to the table with something. With something. Even if you're not all the way there in your life, man, you got to come with something. Because it's not gonna sustain you. No. You and she, if she's good, she ain't gonna stick around for no bull for too long. So yeah, get so. yourself together. Yeah. But y'all, we love that y'all came here, and we hope that you got something. Please, if you are celebrating and love Pookie's promotion, please put some. What should we put in the bottom? I'll have you guys put some of the... Put the fist up. Oh, there. you want the fist? I want the fist. Put the fist down there if you're giving Pookie his support for his new promotion. And I appreciate it. And until next time, y'all. Oh, make sure you check out our Instagram. You guys, I am really trying to be a social media content, content person. What is it called? A content creator. That is what I'm trying to be. I want to be big. You are. But bigger. So, you might see us a lot on the TikToks, on the Instagrams, on the YouTubes. I've been trying to put, uh, get us out there a little bit more. So, feel free to make sure you check us out. Um, babe, I didn't even tell the people about the freaking getting hacked. I'll have to tell y'all about my hack story. Because I touched on it last time. But, if you don't know, we have a whole new Instagram. So, make sure you check us out at the real Spice Life TV um, and we'll make sure you guys get more updates too. But next week, I'll make sure I tell you a little bit more about that hacking situation, the fiasco. For sure. But it ain't stopping nothing over here. So until next time, y'all, make sure you stay blessed, stay safe, stay sweet, and come back next week. Hey. Ooh, bars. Come back. Bye, y'all. <laughs>